In today's video, I'm doing a maple bourbon double smoked ham on a pellet grill. Hey, this is Ricer from Dead Broke Barbecue, Wisconsin, and welcome back to the channel. But if you're new here, we try to help you enhance and amplify your backyard barbecue fun. Now, this double smoked ham is probably one of the easiest thing that you can actually do. You can put whatever type of bourbon glaze on it that you want, but I did a maple glaze, and it was fantastic. So grab a chunk of ham and a bottle of bourbon. We're going to amplify some backyard barbecue fun. Now, all I'm really doing to prep this spiraled ham today is I went ahead and coated it up with a little bit of olive oil, and then we're going to add some jalapeno maple Simon's barbecue rub. And I really like this rub, and it actually has little chunks of jalapeno in it. And seeing that we're making a maple bourbon glaze on it, that rub's going to go perfect with it. Now, I'm not going for the real barbecue flavor on this, but a little bit of barbecue rub always makes a double smoked spiraled ham a little bit better. And just spreading a tablespoon of olive oil on the outside of this ham will be enough of a binder to hold this rub. Let's go ahead and start coating it up. And again, we don't need a lot. We just want to start sprinkling it down the edge. Put a little bit on top, though. Tappity tap. And when you add a little bit of barbecue rub, it also enhances the color to it. Now, if you're interested in trying some of the jalapeno maple rub, I'll leave a link in the description below. Now, I always take a cookie sheet and wrap it with some foil, and I just use one of my wire racks, and I place the ham right on top of that. Because once you start glazing this ham, it's gonna get a little messy, and you don't wanna have all that burning off inside your pit. Now, while this sets and sweats, I'm gonna head out and get the Ryder DLX fired up. All right, so we're just gonna open up the lid, turn the power on and we're gonna turn it right over to 275 degrees. And we'll let all that white smoke get out of the chamber and then we'll close up the lid and preheat the Ryder DLX for about 15 minutes. My 15 minute timer went off, but I forgot to mention that you gotta make sure on the bottom of these spiraled hams are gonna have this little bone protector. But they typically cover it up with a piece of ham on the bottom of it. So just make sure you remove this before you put it in your cooker. And our ham is actually starting to take a little color from that jalapeno maple rub. Look at it. Good job, Simon Barbecue. Place the ham right in the center. And we're gonna close up the lid and set a timer for one hour. Then I'm gonna come back out and we'll hook up our signals into this ham. Now remember, this is already pre-cooked and all we are doing is reheating it. And that's why we're calling a double smoke. Now you can do this cook on any grill that you have, charcoal, pellet, gas, or electric. If you're new to the whole pellet cooking, I say you start out with one of these first because all you're doing is simply reheating that pre-cooked ham. So I'll see you in an hour when we go ahead and start checking some temperatures. My one hour timer went off, let's go ahead and rotate this 180 degrees and then we're gonna turn on our signals and put a probe right in it so we can start getting some temperatures on it. We're just gonna take it and turn it 180. Turn on my signals. And then I'm just gonna take my probe and we're gonna put it in this meteor part. Now the bone is running from here to this direction, so this is the meteor part of this ham. And we're just gonna go right here. Don't touch the bone, but we'll get in about that deep. And then we'll close up the lid and we're gonna set a timer for another hour. Then we'll come back and check the temperatures on that spiral cut ham. All right, another one hour timer off. Let's go ahead and rotate that spiral cut. Open up the lid. All right, again, watch out for your cord. And we'll just turn it around. You can hear it starting to sizzle. So she's cooking. It's starting to split. It's a good sign. And our internal temps are at 85 degrees, so we got a ways to go. But this is a good time to start making up our maple bourbon glaze. So the first thing I'm starting with is one cup of brown sugar. Get that in, and we'll just kind of smush this down a little bit. One cup of real maple syrup. Don't mess with the log cabin or the Aunt Jemima stuff. Get that poured in. I got a couple heaping tablespoons of our jalapeno maple rub. Pour in a half a cup of apple juice. And then finally, the best part of the whole deal, some Maker's Mark. And we're gonna leave the cap off for right now. Just get that poured into with our mixture. All right, so this is mixed up pretty good. Now let's get it under some heat. Open up the lid and take my maple bourbon and put it right in this cooker. I'm gonna set it right over here on this side. Now I'm gonna close up the lid, but I'm still gonna monitor that maple bourbon glaze. I wanna stir it, and once it starts to reduce down, I'll probably pull it off the heat and just let it rest. 
maybe put it back in there right before we go ahead and start glazing up this ham. But if you're not doing the maple glaze in the cooker itself and you're doing it on the stove, just set a timer for about a half an hour because you want to continue to check those temperatures. I'll bring you back when we start reaching that 130 internal and then we'll start glazing up this spiral cut ham. Now I'm only half done and that's why I left the lid off because I can take a poke. <laughs> Sweet nectar of the God. I'm four hours into this cook. Let's go ahead and start glazing this thing up. Well, awesome. We're starting to get some really good color and it's starting to separate. So we're getting close to being done. Now, one thing before you grab that pan, I did double up my cotton liner so I can hold it. And you can see that my glaze is nice and warm. And when spinning it a little bit there and stirring it up, she started bubbling up but we're just gonna start painting it on. And it started to break down pretty decent, but it's still a little runnier than I like. So next time, I think I'll cut back a little bit on that apple juice. So if you go a quarter cup of the apple juice, I think you'll be better off. It'll get a little thicker. Now it's not bad. Not bad, but it's not where I want it. And I always try to take these bristles and get them right in between that ham slices because that'll start layering back in there you'll have a bigger bite of flavor for sure all right so let's just go ahead and rotate this around and this thing is going to be warm also so be careful and we'll just continue to go ahead and coat this up now with all this sugar it is going to darken up this ham some but that's all right that's part of the flavor and now we'll close up the lid and set a timer for 15 minutes and I'm just going to keep coming out here and coating up this ham every 15 minutes with our maple bourbon glaze. And once I reach an internal of 140 degrees, we'll pull it out. So the next time you see me is when we're actually going to pull this ham off. All right, it's been five hours exactly on the head and this ham is reading at 140 degrees. So let's get this thing out because I'm starting to get hungry. All right, well, we might as well just check a temperature here. Oh yeah, 140, that's good to roll. All right, we'll pull out our probe, get that off to the side, turn off the power on our signals and get this out of here. Take our pellet bucket and get that underneath and we'll go ahead and dump all our pellets and just let them all drain out of here. We'll get the ham out because that pan inside there is filled with a bunch of burnt up maple syrup bourbon mix and I don't want that going in the house. And now I'm just gonna let that ham rest for about 15, 20 minutes and I'll meet you by the cutting board and we're gonna do a taste test. So this maple bourbon double smoked spiral cut ham is rested for 20 minutes. I'm hungry, let's cut into it. I can tell you one thing, it smells amazing. And you can just start cutting. There's no real reason or way to do it, but as you start feeling a little bit of bone, just back the knife off and let's go ahead and spin this open. Ooh, I can tell right now it's going to be good. But I always like this top crispy part. That to me is my favorite. Just go ahead and cut a chunk off from here because I really want to taste this bark. <laughs> Incredible. Now, not all of it's going to be spiral cut sometimes, but this chunk right here will just set off the side. But once you get into these parts, it's sandwich meat heaven right here. And let's just lop off a couple pieces. You can see where the maple bourbon glaze started to run into the grooves. I can certainly taste that maple though, even on the inside. But the outsides, that's money. Now this recipe is gonna be more on the sweeter side, but with the salt, that maple glaze, and that jalapeno maple rub, we're getting some decent spice, a little bit of kick, but nothing overwhelming and anybody can enjoy this cook. And typically I like slices like this big for our sandwiches because then you can just go ahead and layer on the flavor. But just look at that. It's so dang good you don't even need a bun. I just put this on a plate. Good enough. Now remember, if you're new to the whole outdoor pellet grill cooking, start with a ham. Reheat it and you'll have some excellence. And it's certainly twice as good as any ham that you've made in your oven. That, I can promise. Cut around the shank a little bit. Get down into here, cut off another chunk. But holy cow, look at that. It's beautiful. That is really good. That's really good. I don't like squeezing anything, but if I push down on this, 
It's just going to run right out like a brisket. Oh, dang. Even like up over on the edges, it's still nice and wet. Perfect. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and become a subscriber. Turn on that notification bell because you don't want to miss my next video. I know you don't. But I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next video. See, now you can trust me. I told you that that wasn't gonna be that spicy. That just a little touch of jalapeno. <laughs> Perfect, yeah. I could eat this actually every week. Mm -hmm. Don't be long, I don't know about